Hello again, everyone. This is PC Delta Link, back with our Enigmatic 2 normal mode playthrough, episode 12. Um, you'll notice our peanuts have grown since last time. I've actually managed to plant the entire row worth, so... And we have a full row of carrots that are mature, so we are slowly gaining a good amount of vegetables and peanuts both. But, um, that's not the focus of this episode. I have decided that what we're going to do next is focus on organizing our items we have, our storage, and also sprucing up the base a bit cosmetically. Gain some more fancy looking walls, floors, etc. So, I've dug out the base a little bit. You can see the wall used to be here and I've kind of just given myself a couple more blocks all around. The ceiling's a little bit higher. Everything's just moved back a bit. So, we're gonna get ready to expand and improve the base. And, um, the main way we're going to do this for improving our storage is using storage drawers. Storage drawers are from the storage drawer mod. And you can stack them, they look wonderful. You can have split versions and normal versions. And basically, the basic one holds 32 stacks per drawer. And it's of one item, it will hold 32 stacks of that one item. And they're not expensive, you can see, just some wood planks and any chest will make your basic one. Um, you can split it into basic drawers one by two, and this holds 16 stacks per drawer, so instead of one item, you can hold two in this block. But in exchange, you can hold less stacks. And then it can split one more time into this uh, two by two, which then you can have four items in this block, and it holds only eight stacks per drawer. But for little items, eight stacks is still a lot. So, I think that's what we're going to do for the most part. Um, and I'm going to figure out where exactly we're going to put this here in a couple minutes. But that's going to be our main goal. We also are going to be have a couple more caches made. And this is very important. This here is a crescent hammer. And it's made very simply with just some iron and one tin ingot. And you need this in order to move these caches without destroying the items in them. If you don't have these... Actually, I think I tried earlier and you can't even mine this. Yeah, you can't. So, you have to have the crescent hammer to even move it. You just shift-click and you will pick up the cache. If you look here, it shows how much cobblestone's in there. So it does store the items properly. But yeah, you can see we have a few more of them. We're going to use that for some of our bulkier items, because this still holds 20,000 items. That's still quite a bit. So we do need that for any of the bulkier items that we don't want to put into a little storage drawer. But as you can see, I have plenty of treasure chests, plenty of wood, and I have even more wood ready to go if I need it. So we'll just make a couple of these to start with. Actually, let me, let me do this. Um, we're obviously not going to take 32 of those, but let's start with six of these. Oh, that was kind of a weird glitch there for a second. We'll take a couple of these. Six of those, too. Sure, why not? And then shift-click this recipe. And we'll take two of those. Eight of that ought to be plenty. So yeah, we're, we have a lot of work to do here, so I think I will get all this set up. And oh, um, one other thing before we go is we're going to also be making a drawer controller. Which this thing's not too expensive, just any drawer, a diamond, some cooked stone, and these redstone comparators, which are made with redstone torches, stone, and a piece of nether quartz. They're really not that expensive. Redstone torches, just a stick with a piece of redstone on it. But this lets you interact with um, a bank of connected drawers. So anytime you have your drawers that you set up, if they're all connected together, then put, piping anything into that drawer controller will put it in the appropriate drawer. 
So hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate that. I don't really have access to proper item pipes yet, but I might be able to get something from Mechanism for that. But it's still a very important thing to just have for later. So I will be back in a little bit after I set up this bit of drawers and uh, yeah, I will see you all in a few minutes. Okay, we are back after going through our chests and reorganizing everything. You'll see we have now a bank of drawers in front of us holding not all the different stuff we had because there's no way I have enough drawers for that, but most of the stuff we commonly use. And so, like, for instance, we'll eventually have a enormous amount of iron, so for right now this gets an entire drawer to itself for 32 stacks of it eventually. Copper and tin we don't need as much of, so this was only up to 16 stacks. And you can see at the top of the screen the text telling you how many stacks we have and then partial. So like tinning it is one stack of 64 and then 30 more besides that. And then some of the lesser stuff that we don't have as much of, like zombie flesh, gunpowder, draconium ore, draconium dust. Uh, we have one ender pearl. We killed an enderman that... Um, Decided to warp in here while it was raining, so we decided to take care of him, and we got lucky and got an ender pearl. We got our various ingots over here. Diamonds and emeralds. And we did go ahead and build the drawer controller, so all these are linked. And how I had this set up, and here's our coal and redstone, is this chest, you can see there's a mechan logistical transporter behind that and from mechanism and that takes items and pipes them around the wall and into this drawer controller from behind so we'll take a couple of these and I'll just chuck them in here and you'll see it'll take them and if you watch the coal counter it will go up and see there it goes it's not super fast but if I had the stuff that goes in these drawers I can just throw it in the chest and forget about it um, we have a couple more caches up here for... We have our cobblestone, dirt, gravel, and now sand. So for our bulk items like that. We have... We did get a gold chest. Because for food items, trees, and other greenery, we really were out of room. So, by comparison, here's an iron chest. And this is a just a building material chest for right now. So here's an iron chest, and then this is a gold chest. So, a lot more space. You can see this one is full. So, I'm either going to get more chests or figure out something else for some of these items. I mean, there is a diamond chest, but I'd rather not spend that at the moment. To make a gold chest, um, it's just like... Oh, here it is. A iron to gold chest upgrade is simply eight iron ingots surround... Or eight gold ingots, sorry surrounding an iron ingot, and then you just right-click the iron chest and it turns it into a gold chest. Uh, I had this chest for just our, a lot of the quest reward stuff we got that we really had no use for at the moment. Um, more uncommon items, a couple gems that I don't really have much use for, one periodot, uh, our rubber, grains of infinity, an electrum block, iridium shards, conduit binder, stuff we really don't use very often, but it's not super common. This is for our tools, weapons, and armor, and there is a couple ore blocks in here, and I'll explain why shortly. Because um, there is a reason for that. And then we have our drops for our different mobs, some miscellaneous blocks, furniture, so like that. The drops that aren't already in the drawers. The drawers have a decent amount of it. The gunpowder, the arrows, the blaze rods, blaze power, spider eyes. So a lot of the drops are over there, but for the ones that we only have a couple of, like... Zombie head, I only have two. Creeper head, one. Skeleton skull, one. Those can go in here. And any machines we aren't using anymore, like the electric furnace. So I also, you'll notice, move the industrial craft machines. They are now over here against the wall. And the bat box is in here now, so our solar panels are still there. They still feed into the bat box properly. The power lines for this are now underground and come up underneath these. And our generator is here as well. If we do need to give it a quick boost, we can throw some coal in there to give the bat box an extra push. But I just wanted them out of the middle of the floor. 
I do not have the mechanism machines moved currently. That I will do at some point in the near future. I'll kind of clean this up a little bit into the wall. You can see we push this wall back just a hair further. Um, so yeah, we're getting there for right now. Our milk jug is here too. We will have a proper kitchen at some point in a future episode. And that'll go in there once we do. But for right now, this is just going to stay here. Yeah, this chest is empty for now. This can just be if we're working on something in the meantime. This chest is empty. That's just the output from the furnace line there. So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this system. Um, it'll definitely serve us pretty well for right now. Um, oh yes, I had said that there was a reason for there being ore blocks in here. So we made, between episodes, an item called the scanner. And it's pretty simple to make. It's just made with nether quartz, gold, iron bars, iron, and a piece of redstone. And what this thing does is it can actually um, search for different things. Now, by default, it doesn't do anything. See right here, it says no scanning module installed. Um, also, this thing needs power, so we can just chuck it into our bat box here. And you see it charges it up real nice. And you can install different modules for this, like this one is a rare ore module. It checks for diamonds, emeralds, etc. And if we hit the recipe on this, it's just a diamond with a blank scanner module. And the blank module is just three cactus green or green dye of any kind, um, clay, gold nugget, not hard to get. Cactus green is the easiest of this to get for us at the moment, and that's just cooking um, cactus up in a furnace. So... Yeah, not difficult to get right here. And how this works, so let me equip the module. And if I hold the button, right click, you can see it scans for stuff, more uncommon ores. And anything that's glowing is an uncommon ore. And to give you a better demonstration of this, let me run downstairs to our diamond area. And this thing will go nuts down here. Yeah. So, as you can see, it highlights a ton of different blocks in front of us. It's like, that's emerald right there. Let's say it's, it's really handy. It does not use much electricity per charge. It's really very conservative on its energy usage. Um, you can also scan for mobs with this thing, too. Which there are none. Oh, no, there is one there. And if you look over it, it even shows what it is a zombie villager. But anyway, the, the reason I have uh, those ore blocks is see, this is a scanner module block, so you can actually tell this to scan for an individual block. So, like, I could put down this osmium, right-click it with that block, and you'll see now it says Configured Block Osmium Ore. So, if we open our scanner up, and you shift-left-click these modules in here. So, if we scan now, it only highlights Osmium Ore. So, this is extremely good for finding specific blocks that you need. And see, there it highlights that one right in front of us. So, that's why back at our base. That's why we have these ore blocks in here. If we need to search for them, we can just throw them on the ground, scan it with that block module, and move on. And we picked up an emerald, so we're just going to throw it in there, and it's going to go over to our emerald spot over here. So currently I have seven, and in just a second it'll be eight. There we go. Now, the next thing I had talked about was getting more cosmetics upgrades for the base done, particularly the walls, the floor, etc. And to do that, we are going to work with the chisel mod. The chisel mod is a mod that's really about decorative block usage. And the chisel is very simple to make. You see here it's just a stick and an iron ingot. And what this does is you right click, 
and you take a block, in this case cobblestone, and see you can turn into all these different styles of blocks. So let's grab, say, this prism one right here. And you can see it's still cobblestone, and if you mouse over it, it's cobblestone, but it's a completely different texture now. So this is really great for decorative works on your base. Um, in particular, we are going to be doing a lot of decorating shortly here. I have some ideas already. And this is cooked stone and gives slightly different design. So does stone run through a furnace to get this stone instead of cobblestone? And yeah, I have some ideas for what we're going to do for the walls and floor and a couple other things. So I'm going to get started on that because I have a lot of work to do. And... We will be back shortly. Okay. I have finished the cosmetic upgrades to the base for the moment. I might tweak this a bit later, but for now, here is the grand reveal. I redid the entryway. Um, I added what is known as a high-tech door from Molasses Doors. And I'll show you the recipe real quick because it's pretty dang cheap. Just some gold bars in this iron glass door, which you get that from glass and some iron. So very cheap recipe, but I love it. It's a really cool door. I wish it was three blocks tall instead of two, but this is the best I got. And here is our base now with the redone textures for the ceiling, the floor, and the walls. So we decided to go with the small bricks for our wall choice. We have this mosaic pattern for some of the... Um, and the... Yeah, sorry, lost my train of thought there. Some of the more decorative bits we chose mosaic. For the floor and ceiling we did sunken for the style. And yeah, we have more mosaic around here. So, yeah. That's what we've managed to pull off for our... Uh, for the moment, our cosmetic changes. So, we'll end up doing more later, probably, and tweaking this as we go. But for now, I hope you all like what we've done with the base for the moment. And let's see, before I end this episode, I'll go... I'll mention a couple different things that I've made off camera, but haven't really explained that well yet. First one that I will mention is the configurator. The configurator is basically the wrench of mechanism, and it's made with two enriched alloys, lapis, a stick, and then one of those energy tablets from earlier. And this is needed for using most of the piping in Mechanism. So let me demonstrate here and break that. So see, at the moment, there's no water running through this. Um, the current, the default state for this is to configurate items. So you hold shift and right click and you see it change to push, change to pull. So then that pipe is now pulling water out of the sink. And we basically did the same thing for this mechanical pipe here. We told it to pull items out of the chest. So that was the first thing. Uh, the second thing, you might have noticed these two new machines up here. This is a simple sag mill and a simple alloy smelter from Ender.io. These are both used for some of the uh, recipes we're going to need later on for certain particular alloys. The sag mill is not too bad. Just some flint, some iron, stone gears, a piston. And then this simple machine chassis, which is, you might have recalled, we got Grains of Infinity a few episodes back. That's what we needed this that those for. So, we need two of those, because the other thing that uses that is a simple alloy smelter. So that's basically the same thing, just with a bucket and furnaces instead. 
So, not too expensive. And these are used to make special alloys and also special glass. They do run off pa power, excuse me. Um, we can get better versions of these later. In fact, we're going to probably within an episode or two. But for right now, they'll serve their function. I haven't needed them for much yet, but I will in the coming episodes. Um, I think I mentioned we got rid of our electric furnace from here because anything from the furnace we're just going to put in the smelting factory since this can do three items at once. So let's basically replace that. Even the macerator. I really don't need the macerator anymore. At least not right now. Later on there's some industrial craft ore that will require that. Particularly nuclear processing. But until I get to that point I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I did for now put these over here to kind of have them out of the way. Uh, let's see. I think next episode we're going to do some equipment upgrades, both to my armor and to get some new tools. But for us to do that... There's something I need real quick. Here we go, seared brick. And I'm just going to put these building materials in here for now. But uh, there is an upgrade to both the tool station and the armor station. So we're going to grab these. And this will require... I believe it's three seared bricks for each. And then we'll need a ton of iron. We need some iron blocks for this upgrade. Uh, I actually need... I believe it's eight we're going to need all together. So this recipe is kind of intensive, but this is used for pretty much all the high-level tool recipes. Yeah, there we go. So here's our armor forge. We went from an armor station to an armor forge. And then we have our tool station, and that goes up to a tool forge. And this allows us to make some of the more advanced tools that we're going to get to in an episode or two, such as the hammer, the excavator, the lumber axe. Yeah, armor, I'm honestly not quite sure what it does, since I'm not as experienced in the constructs armory, but it's an upgrade, so... That's done now, and within an episode or so, we'll probably get some new and better tools for our basic digging and working around the base. Uh, let's see, I got another couple minutes, so I believe I saw something else I can get. Yeah, they're still in this mod. Slabs and one iron ingot. Okay, easy enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the slabs in a circle with the iron in the middle is an oak tool rack. And what this does is I can shove this, say, right here. And then I can take a tool that I don't use very often or don't need at the moment, like, say, this... Uh, chisel, and boom. I can put them on there. This can hold up to four tools. So we can throw our configurator on there. Oh, maybe we can't throw it on there. Maybe it is only two. And you just right-click it again to retreat. Another configurator just doesn't go on there. That's what it is. Hm. Let me see if this will go on there. No, it won't. Okay, so that just won't go on there. So yeah, the configurator won't sit on there, but the wrench might. Let me try the wrench, the other wrench. Yeah, the other wrench sits on there. Yeah, 
And we'll go ahead and throw the shears up there too. So let's see, this is just a handy way to keep tools outside of a chest. And anytime you want one, you can just right click it, go do whatever you want, and right click it back up there again. So it's pretty nice. Um, at some point I'll get a proper bedroom for myself as well and not just a bed laying in the middle of the floor here. And also in the future we will be moving the Tinker's Forge probably to its own dedicated room. But that's going to be a few episodes away yet. Oop. But yeah, I think that'll about do it for this episode. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you all like the storage system we've come up with for the moment. Um, this is probably going to be what we use until we get to Applied Energistics 2, which is still a ways off, but I think this will be sufficient until then between that and I can upgrade these chests as needed quite a bit, honestly. Um, I think that's what we're going to go with. So, yeah, I think we're going to end this episode here and... Hope you all enjoyed it, and I will see you all next time.